thank you guys for so much patience. First of all, let me do a quick intro. Uh, welcome to the Expert Series webinar uh, masterclass. Uh, this for this uh, episode, we have a very special guest. My good friend Baptiste is a super pro when it comes to selling in the European market, working with seven and eight figure brands, and he's going to share with us not only the tremendous opportunity that Europe represents, but also how to really win in Europe. So, uh, so Baptiste, the floor is yours, my friend. Okay. Yep. Um, so, yep, my name is Betty Sposi. I'm the European uh, Marketplace Director and also the USA Marketplace Director at uh, Sweet F e-commerce. That's a company based in Guangzhou. And uh, tonight, I or today for you guys, I wanted to talk about how to sell successfully in uh, Amazon Europe. I also happen to uh, source for... Um, other people uh, independently on my own business. And uh, overall, I am an e-commerce enthusiast, um, love the Shopify dropshipping and Amazon as a whole. All right, so I'm not sure if you believe or still believe in magic, uh, but I know in our community, there's a lot of people that thinks uh, or wished um, with a, a little formula, um, everything is going to be uh, smooth and they think, you know, they start planning in a year time, I'll make millions of dollars and everything's just going so fine. Um, this is Shenzhen and uh, I live not far for, away from there. A lot of my clients um, live and um, work from Shenzhen. And um, there's many people in China that actually still believe, well, they don't really call it magic, but this, this is the way they've been taught. And so they think like, uh, you know, getting together and just doing those uh, techniques uh, with a very, very simple formula uh, will, will get them to the top. My slides. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, all right, sorry. I, just I was just muting that. myself. Okay, no problem. Okay, so uh, by duplicating listing, that's one of the things they do. They, they duplicate your listing, taking all of your keywords, all of your hard work, uh, uh, and to replicate, basically. Uh, they're also very fond of um, paying a lot of money to get their five-star review because the review is one of the uh, motors um, the traction that uh, products need to get ranked, at least to sell more. They also love to uh, reprice, so we doubt the competition, even though that means they won't make a profit. Uh, they've got these app manufacturers. They can literally with all the competition out. Do really, um, in my opinion, is just make the the workers at the factory get the salary. They're not profitable. Um, yes, and also uh, being some uh, third party uh, providers that would come on other competitors' listing and uh, change their uh, pictures or listings or. Uh, upvote, downvote, um, you know, like flag, make a, a listing flag or product flag saying it's adult, etc. Uh, those are called black ads. And this, this is a range of techniques that is widely used in China. And uh, so many people just still believe that is the way to go. But how long between you and me uh, do they think this is going to last? And the answer is, is really not long. This is not a business. Again, they're not very profitable and quickly take as much as they can, just like in having a heist. And, and, uh, and they don't think more than this. So for Amazon Europe, what we've seen actually, even with the sellers in China that are being successful Chinese seller, is actually an opposite of these techniques. Um, the shortcut approach uh, is very popular in China. Sure, they uh, show way to spend a lot of money. Yeah, they spend a lot, lot of money to actually get there uh, where they can use that money to build a brand. There's a high risk uh, in 2016 and then in 2017, there's twice been rounds of um, swipe, review swipe. 
entire products uh, have been, an um, entire train of review has been taken away, sometimes putting a product or brands to an end. Uh, so other cracks have been, uh, crackdowns have been uh, conducted by Amazon. And this is what these people risk. One of those days to wake up with no business and having all these people to feed and all this system in place that they can't use anymore. So uh, once they realize they went wrong, it might just be too late for their business. So I would not recommend to use those techniques at all, and especially not for Europe. All right, that's like setting your money on fire, it is. Uh, however, those business guys in Europe that are being very successful, they all have one thing in common, a secret weapon. So how do I know? A quick word about me, uh, I live in China, so it's a good starting point. I traveled the world uh, for about three years to go to e-com conferences and meet with Amazon sellers, uh, you know, beginners, intermediates, advanced, very advanced. Um, so, you know, it's one of the things I love the most, networking. Uh, like I said uh, before this video, uh, I participated in a growth of a seven to eight uh, figure uh, seller brand. Um, and uh, I helped also dozens of uh, manufacturers in China getting started. So from all these people, I extracted directly this secret weapon uh, to sell millions of products to European. But when you're actually going to know what it is, it's no secret. It's so simple, so obvious, that people just don't want to think it's a secret weapon. So although those sellers, they are like uh, different categories, different products, uh, they're all different. They all have one key ingredient and I'm gonna tell you what it is. The number one task as an online bean business owner is to transfer into your customer's mind a simple concept, but very powerful, a strange and satisfying idea that they get the value, and it's what we call the perceived value. Okay, so uh, let me just try to slide, okay. So what is perceived value anyway? Uh, a quick way to say this, because I'm French and it's easy for me to talk about this example, um, I think one of you guys need to mute yourself. Maybe it's uh, the person I just admitted in the room. Okay, great. So it's very easy for a Frenchman to sp speak about um, uh, luxuries and fashion. You know, lots of brands like LVMH uh, and Chanel uh, are in France. So uh, let's take this very simple example. You all know PVC, you know, it's like one of the, the most uh, used uh, plastic, uh, synthetic plastic that uh, there is on the market, okay? Uh, I think it's the third most popular, right? So if my product wouldn't be made out of 70% plastic, which is polyvinyl uh, chloride, would you agree to pay, uh, this is Singapore dollar, but that's about USD, $4,700 for my product. If it's just like made of plastic, what's the cost of plastic, right? You probably think it's insane. <laughs> I would, <laughs> I certainly would. Okay. The answer would probably no, right? At least that would be my answer. But in comes the perceived value. Right, and this is very powerful. Chanel, yes, PVC, that's what you read right there. There's a bit of a calf skin, and I love the way they just make it sound like so luxury. Patent calf skin. So of course, they have a patented color, but it's a rainbow, right? Like you, you get that on those uh, uh, child unicorns. That's the same thing. Uh, you've got some lamb skin as well. So you've got like two, uh, two leather, and you've got silver tone metal. What's silver tone metal? It's, it's basically stainless steel, right? What's the cost of that? What's the index of those uh, communities? Pretty cheap, I think. However, the price, and you can't really 
be here is what I said earlier. It's 6,670 Singapore dollar, which is $4,700. That's on their website right now. Okay, and um, that's the, the change. So you can see, I'm not making this up. And this was actually uh, May 27th. So it's quite, um, it's not that long ago. All right, another example, this is the second hand market. So we're not, let's not get started on this, but then because those are limited edition. So every, I think every season there's about seven collections. There's a limited edition of each bags, which are in certain shop around Europe. And once they're gone, they're gone. You can't find them anymore. So on a second hand market, they jack up the price sometimes three times over. And for what? For PVC plastic. So I think it's a great example uh, to what is perceived value. And uh, I love what Ted did, and I, I thank Ted Talk for taking this video from them. So basically, you're using what people already have in their mind to construct that feeling, that, that satisfying feeling, which is the value. And people start to want something, to need something. And you use what's there already, you know. So whoever it is, it might be slightly different, yes. But the value, the value is equal, is the same for everybody. All right. So I believe um, by showing you uh, what is perceived value, now you start to understand the concept and how it can be applied for your own business. And maybe I created that a parting shift and created an ID inside your brain as well. It's all part of the exercise. All right, so you can think of uh, perceived value as the relationship between the benefit expectations of the client and the cost that they pay. So it's not exactly the same for everybody. Um, the, the values are defined through the eyes of each consumers and the importance depends on how much they pay for it, basically. Uh, some people are willing to go all the way to $4,000 and some people are not because they just don't like me. I would never uh, spend that money in such a bag. But if you give me a trip to, you know, halfway around the world somewhere in a really cool uh, vacation house, I would probably blow the, the, five, uh, the five grand to go there, you know? So it really depends on the expectation of your consumer and, and the, the cost they're willing to pay. That's the value for everyone. Um, you got in nations, in markets, a different set of values as well. So there's predefined values that exist. And then every individual has got their own prism of values. And that's what I call the four eyes. Sorry, it's a bit creepy. <laughs> but I thought that was funny. Uh, the four eyes of consumers. So the four uh, value system of the consumers uh, can be classified into four sections. First one is the monetary value. It's the most simple. This is the price that is paid against the uh, offer. So uh, it's a trade-off, right? Uh, you give me that for that much money. So that's the monetary value, basically. And, and this is kind of a common basis, you know, like uh, let's say a can of Coke is more or less the same price if you go from one continent to another. Uh, a McDonald's meal is the same. So that value is sort of um, inherited from the society you're living. It's, it's, uh, it's a given. Then there's a functional value. And this is, okay, does that um, really offer me a solution for something that um, I consider as a problem or as something I want to improve? Uh, let's say uh, selfie stick, you see, it's just like, it's very functional. You can extend yourself, you have a new frame that is valuable for travelers. So you can see the functional value there, how it uh, function. Then there's a social value. Right. And the best example for a social value is, uh, you know, show that you've got money or show that you've succeed enough in your life to pay for a five-star hotel. And you can have great Wi-Fi to do your uh, presentation uh, instead of being in an Airbnb in Taiwan <laughs> with a cheap Wi-Fi, right? <laughs> well, I don't care about status, but a lot of people do. And that's called the social value. I think you get that.
And last is the psychological value. So it's something, let's say if I want to treat myself, I had like a bad day, just like today, and uh, I'm, I want to go to a great restaurant. Well, you know, that value is just not just the meal. It's not exactly the ingredients. It's all the value of um, letting it go of a bad day. You know, that's a psychological value that you bump. So you can see when you're playing with different sort of orders of value and combine them together, you can um, basically expand uh, prices. You know, it really depends on the expectation of each customer. Okay, so for your brand and your products, you need to find your sweet spots. So, you know, there's an iron law of market that people is never going to pay uh, $10,000 for, uh, you know, for a vegetable, for instance, right? Uh, I'm, I'm going very extreme here, but it's to give you like simple examples that you can follow. Uh, just as well as, you know, if you're not profitable, then you've got no business. You wouldn't sell for less than its value, right? Everyone can sell, uh, you know, uh, an iPhone for $2. It's not a business, right? Okay, so consumer, consumer make decision in, online as little as a third of a second. We all know this. And they base, especially on Amazon, it's like, okay, I'm looking for a keyword. I'm looking for something I really know I want to buy. That's the first thing. Then, okay, I see a set of uh, products. And I'm going to use those prism, those four eyes of values to define what is good for me? What am I looking for? What corresponds to what I'm looking for? Okay. So that's going to be the image first, the, the, maybe the price, and then the reviews. This usually works like that. All right. Um, back to Europe, right? Uh, every country, every nation has got a different way. Like consumers got a different way to buy products. Uh, and then... Uh, in society, you've got different levels. You've got, you know, basically the working class, you've got the middle class, and you got the wealthy people. Well, they don't really have the same needs, and they don't really think the same way emotionally and rationally uh, to purchase items. So, you know, you need to take that in consideration. But besides that, you also have, uh, you know, in France, in Italy, in Spain, we're more of a Latin countries. So sometimes you would actually see in, in the province, uh, people are more attached to tradition, uh, more attached to something local. That's going to play a part. Uh, whereas in Germany, maybe uh, the lot is the expectation, as we we're going to see, is going to be a lot higher for quality. You know, am I paying the right price for the quality? Or actually, I, I don't care about the price. I just want quality. So you see, this set of order is not exactly the same. Um, so we've seen those uh, four uh, prism of value. And then uh, here I wanted to show you the quality, price, and origin. In Europe, maybe more than anywhere else, uh, this is what we're going to see and focus on. Uh, people first uh, have a lot of expectation on quality overall, and especially Germany, I, I repeat. And the order of uh, reference is, is uh, that quality of products, you know, does it does the job that I'm expecting? You know, if, if, is it sturdy? Is it going to break after 10 use or five use or two use? Then the price, you know, like the balance between that quality and what I'm paying for it. And then the origin, of course, everyone's very attached in Europe to the origin, you know, you can, Tell them China, they're going to feel bad about it. Even though most of the products they, they consume on a daily basis come from China or has been made somehow with the raw materials of China. And there's like great Chinese products. There's, there are great. They, they're just as, as great as the bads. But in the people's opinion, they prefer something that is made down the street because they feel closer to, to them, right? Okay, so... Um, now, good surprises work 100% of the time. When you play around these values, these orders of value, you can now sort of set expectations from your customer if you have a customer avatar, and you can surprise them to go exceed uh, their expectation. I remember this guy from Airbnb, one of the C, uh, I think he's the CEO, and he said like, okay, what's a, what's a six-star review? What's a seven-star review? What's a 10-star review? Sometimes it doesn't need 
much more effort or even much more money to exceed your customer's expectation. This is where you're going to gain a lot of traction in Europe. Right. So also the bad surprises, they work the same way, but well, they work in the same powerful way, but the opposite way. Okay, so make sure you, you actually meet the expectation and not go underneath. And if you make a failure, if you make a mistake, then just make sure to make it up to them, right? This is a huge factor. Um, so yeah, people have huge expectation on value de delivery. When you choose an audience, a customer avatar, you have to know your business can afford to blow them away. Don't pick a product where you know there's going to be too much financial effort and you're not going to be able to compete. Yes, there is demand. Yes, there's a market. But what's the point of being page 20 because you don't have the, the same uh, weapons to compete? Pick a product that where you can dominate by over delivering on your value expectation. All right. So now... I think this is what I wanted to give you, more of a mindset than just little hacks. Uh, but that is a secret weapon. All the sellers I've seen succeed are using these techniques, the perceived value and go beyond expectation. So a few pro tips uh, now for the European market as an expansion plan. So you can activate growth and grow fast if um, you use that factor that I just mentioned, all right? And the, it's the most determinant factor, but the most overlooked as well, okay? The second factor that is super important is know your numbers, yeah? Go, go find all the price, everything, all your cost. Like I said, if you go compete in something that you won't be able to sustain, then the, no matter how much effort you're trying, no matter the niche, you're not ready for that. So, you know, scale down a little bit, dominate, and then you will be able to activate your growth much faster. Uh, start small. That's what I just said. And then once you dominate, you ag aggressively scale up. Um, another thing to keep in mind is the records. Once you start, you have to record everything you do. It, it, it's like it's not optional. It's not a luxury. It is, if you don't do that, every problem you're going to encounter with your tax man, with, it's just going to be a huge issue. That's going to slow you down. That's going to slow your business. That's going to put a lot of strain on the operation. That's not what you want for Europe. And there's a lot of documentation to have. So make sure your system are in place. That's why you need to start small. Uh, and then you compound every step you take. Never reinvent the wheel. Everything you do needs to be gaining throughout so that in eight months, in two years, in five years, all of these efforts are going to start compounding. It's a long-term strategy, Europe. And, you know, three years is enough to go from a five-figure to seven-figure, even more. Like, good expectation if you've got the system in place and everything is, you know, you can go from 25k to three million dollars in two to three years that's a that's a realistic expectation uh so compound every step you take don't reinvent the wheel and make <laughs> that's the last one and i'm gonna put an accent on this make your uh product listing professional don't just google translate it you know <laughs> Do it if you want to make the listing and put it up until you go better, but this is not going to work well for you. You know, all of that honeymoon stuff is real and you need to take advantage of that. So uh, go through third-party provider, get the real words, and this is what I'm going to show you. Okay. Learn our cultural ma major difference. Uh, in China, people think of Europe as one big country, just like China or America. But it's not. It's actually a very different cultures. And that's why there's very difficult problems of politics, because we agree on one market, but not on politics. And it's very difficult. So cultural, major cultural differences. Learn them. Uh, I would thank my friend Yana from uh, YLT Translation. First, she's sponsoring my little presentation. So there's a little cherry on the cake. Uh, and she's providing me help with the slides uh, because I love her slides when I go see her in conferences and I thought this was a great idea. You see Chinese people, they really didn't take that very well when Dolce Gabbana from Italy made that um, you know, cultural mistake. 
everyone knows what's a pizza in, in China. I mean, they're not retarded and they don't use chopsticks. But this was uh, like a big, big insult for the Chinese people and Chinese government. So now, unfortunately, uh, there's no more Dolce Gabbana trading in China. Um, it's a big market. They shouldn't have done that. Another type of uh, thing that can go wrong is if you don't do your market properly, uh, your keywords or your cultural uh, research, uh, you're going to do like uh, Kim Kardashian that uh, wanted to call her new um, close to the body. You know, I, I don't know how you classify that, like spandex type of uh, underwear. She wanted to call it kimono, but kimono is the traditional outfit for the ladies and uh, the misses of Japan. So very, very quickly, she realized that she had to reinvent the whole name and she had to take down, it was already produced, she lost tons of money and it's a Kim Nono. <laughs> All right. Um, so the advice I would give you is speak your brand language. You've got an identity, you know, you must have if you don't have it. Speak your language brand, your brand language, but with your customer local accent, right? So whether it's in Germany, France, United Kingdom, Holland, uh, now that open, Italy, Spain, the rest of Europe, because you can fulfill from Germany to the rest of European country, that's great, right? Um, just try to speak with their accent, you know, or if you can't speak with their accent, Try to find something that can adapt to everyone. You know, something a bit bland like IKEA. You know, IKEA is a good model if you want to speak uh, the brand language with your customer local accent. All right, uh, quickly now I'm going to finish uh, this presentation. Uh, just uh, if you go use something like Google Translate, uh, you're going to have lots of examples like that. First of all, they're not ranking the same. Uh, and then uh, sweetened milk can in English go la leche azucarada puede, which uh, in Spanish says the milk uh, that is, well, actually, I don't speak Spanish. I'm not going to try, but um, that says a lot of difference. It's not the same at all. Okay. Can, can is a can, like a can of Coke. Puede is you can do this. So you see there's like a translation problem. Um, from this very serious review, 56.2% uh, uh, of surveyed people said that the language in those European countries are more important than the price. When they can recognize something and they can understand it, well, they will definitely com uh, convert more uh, and buy the, your product rather than it, it's just English and they don't understand, or even worse, like I've seen before, it's German, but it's all in Spain. Not many people in Spain. Uh, speak German. All right, so now another example, US versus the uh, German market, which is the biggest one after the US, by the way, uh, biggest Amazon uh, market. How to present your company values, uh, website flyers, etc. all the copywriting. Um, and so the Gen German regular translation is what you see over there. And the Amazon translation with keyword would be all of the red stuff you see, okay? So on the very top, you can see just translated from Google and at the bottom, how much more keyword to rank and to give that same uh, impression to your customer. Uh, so in Germany, they don't really, you know, they don't really care about respect and humility. That's that's not really how you. Um, no, sorry. Uh, in the USA, I think I'm. I'm. My slides are being mixed. Sorry, sorry. Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So you you can see the listing. This is the listing. Okay. So cool, cooler, coolest. Whether you're sipping hot or espresso, no, no, no. You know, you, you, this brand is trying to express a feeling, like a, an atmosphere. Happy fingers. You know, like. But in Germany, happy fingers means nothing. And cool, coolest, that's not what they're looking for. They're looking for quality. So I'm going back here. The original is patient, passion. Go beyond care. Passion, we go beyond the customer service. So the explanation is care is like the emotional um, way for the US market. But for the German, it's too much. It is only used when talking about friends or relatives not about physical products. So you see like, it doesn't sound good, doesn't sound correct. 
but what you would say, and that's why here there's a lot more word, uh, it's more like the humility going beyond the simple assumptions or the respect leave to the promise to the customer. You see the sentence are uh, uh, around the word humility and uh, humble service is something that German can connect. So I guess you get the point. Um, design each product listing individually for each country. Don't let Amazon do the thing either. Uh, you need a, survey, a service. And you know, if you don't want to go for a YLT translation, then you should get someone. Even on Fiverr, you, I would not recommend, but it's better than Google for sure. Uh, you need to come up with something nice and better even something that the Amazon SEO uh, is going to pick up. So title, bullets, product description, brand, uh, store, front, copywriting, etc. Everything should be using local keywords uh, from the marketplace to talk about your product for maximum conversion rate and a maximum ranking. I use my friend's company, Yara, which is a YLT translation. And she's been so kind because she's my friend and because she likes uh, Lorenzo's audience. And she said, okay, if you scan me, uh, of, or you can find her on Facebook, you can find her online, you know, there's no problem. Um, uh, if, if she's gonna give you an offer, basically she's gonna, uh, you know, do a no deed for free. And uh, as you can see, Amazon listing, e-commerce web shop translation, etc., and she's gonna just do an analysis, uh, run your listing for free, and you can talk to her. She's very, very friendly. So that is it for you guys. Um, you can contact me. Uh, I've got also as a, a little bonus uh, for you if you contact me uh, directly on my Facebook group, where you can see here, uh, or on Facebook directly, uh, you know, and I will probably collect your email as a trade-off, but I will give you a profitability sheet, cheat sheet, uh, that's really helpful. And let me see if I can find it. Uh, right. Well, it's going to be a bit of a stretch to find it, but uh, yeah, it shows you your numbers, what you need to look at, how to be profitable when you look for a product. So it's very important as we saw before to go in Europe. And I will kick that in for you guys if you just uh, contact me directly. So I suggest you do. And that is it for me. I'm going to stop sharing and back to you, Lorenzo. All right. Thank you, my friend. Very good. Very interesting presentation. Okay. Um, do you guys have any questions? Okay, let's open the questions now. All right. I see the chat. Okay. Uh -huh. Someone's just back in. Any question, guys? I'm yeah, here. I so... think Valentin had some questions. He's yeah. based in uh, in London right now. Hey, yeah. what's up, Valentin? Hi, Baptist. Um, yeah, I'm based in the UK. I'm surprised that Germany has the bigger market, to be honest. Yeah. Um, yeah, so... Um, Sounds like you work for a company or you make your own products. Uh, so, I not really understand. Yeah. So, well, good question. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, I work for companies in China. And since the COVID-19, um, I was not allowed to go back to China. So, I'm going back to Europe and I'm going to develop my own brand again. So, what I'm doing right now is actually... Uh, getting some investors to back up my brand and I'm going to invest as well. And uh, three or four of us is just going to go all in uh, into a category that I know very well, which is the kitchen. I used to be a chef in London. Mm. So uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is both answering your question before I used to work for sellers and now I'm just going to go all in at scale for my own business, which is exciting. Wow, that's well, awesome luck. chef. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, any more questions yeah. where, where, where about so, you where about you are in london by the way i love the city you know uh, i've been living yeah. there 10 years yeah i'm in winchmore hill in north london oh yeah yeah all right which area were you from uh more or less the east you know anywhere from east. the you know victoria park to uh you know like more fashionable uh, brick lane and stuff like that uh, Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah, speaks a it, lot. Yeah, 
yeah, wow. now it's, yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> Is that something you can share? It's uh, not uh, appropriate yeah. for for this. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's, it's it's cool. I mean, you know, when I lived in Brick Lane, it was like not as fashionable as it is now and uh, very expensive to live there in, now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so my other question was, uh, can you give us an example of a good surprise that you mentioned? So, yeah. Uh, you know, quality is the first thing, but what would be like another good surprise for a so, customer? In my opinion, it's like you will not, never be able to please everybody, right? Um, but literally, if you kick in something inside your product that they don't expect, like you're, you're adding some value they don't expect, that's really what I say by surprise. An example would be, um, you know, a VIP card that stretched their guarantee of your product from the, the 14 days original to maybe six months or a year, you know, and yeah. you can exchange that to have an email, you know, all they have to do is to just to register an email and they've got a free extended guarantee. I found that this transform a lot and then you got a list of people, you know, so if, if they give you your email freely, now they, they sort of, um, uh, you know, agree to subscribe to your list which is not exactly the same as asking for instant type review, you see. So it's kind of a gray area with uh, uh, Amazon. And I like to play with that because it's very powerful. So you give the value and you get some value to launch new products. You know, uh, Amazon, it's all about repeating that launch and coming with new products. So it's a lot easier when you do have a list of emails um, and you reach people that already bought your brand. So they know you. They like you and they trust you, see? Uh, and another example of value uh, to just not uh, talk about one, it's all lead magnet, right? More or less, but um, you can simply just put a bundle, you know, like a, a limited edition of something that goes with your product. Uh, I don't know if they're a fan of basketball. You can, you know, checking like with the, with the, with the ads, you, you would like a key ring, you know? Um, you know, any, anything that goes and brings some more value that up the value, a uh, combo twice for the price of one, you got to be creative with your audience. You got to know your audience first, right. know their expectation. Where's the bar? You know, where's the level in the industry, in the category? And then raise it. Like I said, what is the six star, uh, uh, you know, experience for a guy renting Airbnb? What is the seven star? Uh, the, the CEO was saying, okay, maybe the six star would be uh, you come and pick them up at the airport, you know, and you bring them back to the flat. And then when they open the flats, this would be the seven star. There's like a, a buffet waiting for them, you know, and then maybe the yeah. eight star would be like the blonde girl waiting for, I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, you know, you can always up the value that you client yeah. expects. Some sort of a freebie, I'm understanding. That I get. Uh, yeah, I, I like freebies, so I guess I'm, yeah. I'm pretty used up on that. But you can be can be creative, you know. What's the value they're looking for? Something unexpected, a surprise. I love this idea, especially the uh, the VIP card extending the warranty, say from thirty days to six months. That's a brilliant idea. I took note of it. Thank you, Betis. So, keep, like, guys, that's something that you may want to include as well and implement in your own uh, packaging and business. That's a brilliant idea. Like, you know, uh, a brand of knife, uh, pro, pro knife uh, called Shun, Kai Shun. It's like American bread made in Japan. Uh, they do a, a sharpening for life. So you send them in, they bring you back sharp like a razor for life. This wow. is the typical type of expectation exceeding uh, for customers. Nice. Any other question, guys? Uh, uh... Valentin, you had some questions concerning yeah. uh, registering yeah. in different European markets. Uh, I think that would take a long time to discuss. But uh, my other main question is, you mentioned quality in Germany, but how do we find that in China? As uh, everybody's uh, so has a bad name all, for it already. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but you know, like... 
I mean, they, they come up with 5G. They come up with, they can build a hotel, uh, a, a hospital in a week. You know, at the end of the day, it's not, they don't like the resource. They've got better infrastructure and they're more advanced than 90% of the countries all around the world. So when you pay the money and you know exactly what you want, you know, you get brands like Nike make, making in China, not just in China now, but um, a lot of very well-placed international brand develop product in China, like Apple. I'm sorry, like you guys, you know, even, even Samsung, you know, how's that? Is that quality? And yeah, yeah. I'm saying it's, uh, I mean, they can do amazing things, but how do, how do we you... find the right okay. uh, factory? Like you said, you work with a lot of them and you yeah. show them the ways to get into Amazon. Like you have a list of uh, approved companies. I mean, his question yeah. was, he asked us before you, you, you started the, the masterclass is that it's been, tr and I and also add the same issue as well. When you contact some suppliers on, on, on Alibaba, they, uh, they post one price and when you ask them, it's always a different price. So when you request for samples, which happened to, to him and other people as well, the samples are nowhere near as good as we were expected. It. So how do you, I mean, how do you find, how do you go about finding reliable suppliers I mean, it's, it's easy for the big corporation like Apple and Samsung to find someone because, of course, they have much more incentives. But for, for smaller people like you and me and other people starting Amazon businesses, how do you go about find, avoiding to get taken for a ride by unscrupulous you know, uh, suppliers and go straight for the ones that you can actually trust, that can actually, when they show you a price, it's going to be that price. And when the, you ask for some samples, the sample is going to be good and, and the first order is going to be good. I think that's the main issue that we we're even discussing that before so i'd like to know your feedback on that that is because you have also a big uh, experience in china and and, and yeah. uh, dealing with suppliers yeah so there's no quick and uh easy answer to that but let me try to break it down into a short version mm -hmm. so it's all coming down to experience okay yes. and and means to an end okay so first you need the mindset then you need to see an horizon, how far your horizon stretch, you know, how far you're willing to find something you don't see yet. You go beyond what you see. Uh, why do I say that? Because Alibaba is not an answer for me. First of all, you've got two Alibabas. You've got the local market and you've got the international market. Are you talking so, about 1668? Correct. Mm. Uh, it, that translates Yalio Baba. Yao yeah, yeah. Yao is one, mm -hmm. Liu is six, mm -hmm. Baba is uh, eight, eight. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, so if you go into those two marketplaces which are exactly the same, uh seventy percent of uh local manufacturers they won't be international. So first of all, you'll get a lot better price. And you can check that it's a lot more complicated though, because you need to have some sort of registration with the telephone number or WeChat account, something like that, or a QQ account. Everything is in Chinese. It's a struggle. So would, but, would, you, would you request for that? I mean, would you recommend for that to have like a Chinese assistant to help you with all that? Okay. So first, again, I'm going back to what I'm, mm -hmm. I was trying to explain very, first you need a mindset, then you need an horizon. Then you need means like financial means, where do you want to go? What's, what's your expectation? And then you got to find your right spot, your sweet spot. Because what now I'm thinking is like, I don't even want to do it myself. Now I want people to do it for me. You know, exactly. I want to pay them the good right amount of money. I got the contact, but I don't want to waste time. Exactly. You know, so actually now I'm using sourcing agents and I'm actually partnering with those sourcing agents to do the whole thing for me. And because I know how deep the problem, the issue is for uh, Westerners to trust those peoples. We're actually building a CRM, uh, like a dashboard online, and we, we want to provide the Western experience to go source uh, with people that, you know, like in between. They're in China. They live in China. They're Chinese, but they work with us or with this company that I, I will represent very soon. Um, and so we, we, we want to bring that experience and that safety, you know, and uh, the good prices. Um, but this has a price, of course, because sourcing is one of the most complicated thing. 
you know, once you've got a very precise idea, and this is, this is why the mindset, like people's like, okay, I want, a, I want a cup or I want a selfie stick or I want a pen. Okay, what kind? How long? You know, what's the, what's the quote? Where is the spec sheet? Have a very precise idea of what you want. Research. That's called product development. If you want to take a product off the shelf and put it in Amazon and don't read ads and just think it's going to work, well, you, you need to do a reality check because that's not going to happen. That happened 10 years ago yeah. when they opened FBA. Not anymore. So you need to level up. And then you need to either go through the pain of learning curve or find someone that you trust, learn, trying different things, testing, seeing the feedback. And then, you know, at some point, you're going to have to take the leap of faith. You're going to have to mm -hmm. risk your money. That's business. That's the best advice I can give you for sourcing your Makes products sense. and quality. Mm -hmm. quality. Quality, just for that issue, you bring... Uh, you either go yourself, that's what I do in China, you inspect every single product. You've got 1,000 bucks, you open them all. Or you get uh, someone like uh, the guys at Kima, Rahul Chalwa, my friend. Uh, yeah. You know, they do a great thing. No one can beat their quality inspection, their report. Uh, you know, everything is explained. They drop the packet, they do everything. That's got a price. But then you're sure 100% that all your products, they're going to be of quality. If you want to do like business in a very good way and bring quality, you need to pay for that quality. Sure. And if you can't, then go to something smaller, you know, but just make sure the quality is there. Find well, a way. Quality is the most important thing in, in business for sure. It is. I mean, it's one of the most important for the customer. Yes. Yeah, no, you're right. It's a good answer. Okay. Um, any more questions, guys? I have a question. Go ahead. Hey, um, my question is um, around VAT taxes and how that functions in Amazon. Um, and do you get charged based on the sales and revenue from each of the marketplaces you're in, or is it like one lump sum based on your uh, where you have your company registered? So it just uh, it, it, it's a lot more simple now. Uh, oh. Amazon has opened about six to eight months ago uh, a whole program that's going to help you um, open a VAT registration in each and every country. But each and every country, you need a different registration and you need uh, it's a different tax system if, depending mm -hmm. on their, uh, you know, import codes and, and whatnot. You know, this again, this is one of the area where I'm, I don't want to touch anything because mm -hmm. I know. Five minutes into it, I'm, I'm like the biggest headache and I hate it. So what I do is I go to uh, those guys at, um, uh, I forgot the name now. Uh, well, it's a VAT agent. Well, they set me up. They, they take care of everything. They connect with my uh, accountant. I've got a, a software that draws all the data from Amazon to give to them. And it's all automated. You know, mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, it's part of my, I've got to uh, trigger the machine. So yeah, upfront cost, but then it's just all part of the percentage and I know my cost. So I do my pricing accordingly, uh, but I don't want to touch it. And that's the, the, the poor answer I've got to, you, to give to you. It's like, it's not my thing. I don't want to know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I, I just make sure it's done correctly though. I'm, I'm uh, you know, 100% uh, compliant uh, it's smart to let expert take care of that because that's a very uh, crucial aspect for sure yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at the end of the day if you're too many places you're nowhere this you're, you're nowhere so yeah, you need to focus on building your business the small details you can always outsource to experts and professionals and vas and whatever me i'm good at branding i'm mm -hmm. good at you know as a chef before i used to uh, use very simple products and make the plate look beautiful that's what i'm good at the what i've been talking about the perceived value i'm jacking up the value for the wow effect and you know this is what i'm good at i'm sticking to that uh finances is very important you know in every business there's three things operations finance sales and marketing i'm good at sales and marketing 
So all, all the rest, you know, the execution, uh, the supply chain, I want this to be sorted for me. The finance, same thing. So the message in here is, guys, focus on your strengths and your weaknesses. Just outsource them or search for experts to help you with that. Don't try to spend too much time on your weaknesses. That's a, that's a poor return on, on investment on your time. Instead, focus on your strengths. That's basically the, the gist of it. When you start small, you understand the, the pain points. You understand that's how you make your system. Create your system or learn from other people's mistake to create your system. Then mm -hmm. once you know, you know, give yourself 90 days to know, then you drop it to somebody else, you know, and then you scale up. Yeah. So. Do all of, how do you choose which, um, which one of the marketplaces you sell in? It looks like there's five. How, which ones ships ship to which company or countries? Or do they all ship to all of them? Very good question. Yeah. Very good question. Um, I would not, I, I would start again small, depending, you know, if you're an advanced seller or not. But for beginners, I would definitely just say one. Uh, in my opinion, Germany is the, the one to go because first year there is actually, it, it's, it's a fact, it beats Japan and the UK has just been regressing since Brexit. Used to be number two, then number three, and then it's number four, and oh, wow. maybe number five uh, soon. So, um, <clears throat> um, yeah, I would start Germany. Why? The simple reason is from Germany, you fulfill all the neighboring country. You know, any other warehouses is going to take more time, uh, more cost. So Germany is where they centralize all around uh, Europe countries to uh, deliver. So that's why I would pick this one. It's a complicated one for the language. Uh, but not impossible and, and very rewarding, very rewarding, but you need the quality. So, uh, yeah, I would start with one. I'm biased. I started with France, but I'm French, so I know the market better. And also for yeah. Germany, I agree. It's a good market, but also for my, I've talked to lots of sellers, big sellers, and they say that Germany is also the, the best market in Europe, but also the most demanding because the German uh, customers are very demanding on quality. If the quality is bad, you're going to get killed and, and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, reviews and all that. So keep that in mind, guys. Yeah. What if you're targeting a country outside of Germany? That's maybe um, a different language. That's right. not so one of these. To me, the business size of a category is, is, is important. You know, at the end of the day, I want to make sure that my efforts, they pay off. You know, I always bring down my time to how much I get at the end of the, the months because that, that show you where you are and where you want to go very quickly. So mm -hmm. if, you know, typically I'll, I'll just break it down to you. Um, Germany is worth 80% of the business. Um, I, I just, uh, we just terminated with the sellers I, I mentioned. The contract is over. Uh, it was 80% of his business. Now, the UK is coming strong. They came last into that marketplace for some reason. Um, I don't exactly understand why. Um, but France, yeah, is like better than Spain and Italy. Um, but yeah, definitely Germany. Germany because you can send to Poland, um, to Poland, sorry. You can send to Hungary. You can send to Serbia. You can send to uh, Greece. Um, you know, and, and that's, that's a lot more customers and they do buy from Amazon. Sure. Uh, so, you know, everything's got to be shipped also. And that makes, uh, you know, that, that's one of the problem in, if you cross country selling, um, you know, if you've got just one warehouse, then that's going to cost you a lot more money or even if it's more, even more money, if it's from the, the uh, FBA warehouses, to fulfill in uh, a country like England that needs to cross the channel. Um, so mm -hmm. strategically, if I don't pick Germany, I would pick France or the UK. But I would just make sure my business is there and you know my warehouse, 3PL, three-party uh, three uh, logistic partner is over there as well. Yeah. Uh, question on, on uh, for example, just take your example of people say from Poland. Let's say I'm a Polish person, I, don't, I go to uh, Amazon right. Germany, but I don't speak German. I don't know if Amazon, because does Amazon has some kind of algorithm to automatically translate the listing to other countries or, yes. or it's only on, on the countries that you, that you do in the language that you do? So that's a very good question, Lorenzo. Um, you can choose to 
transfer your listing from one country to the other automatically. Uh, and you can choose to populate with your own keywords or let Amazon do the job. I would not recommend Amazon do the job because they do a poor job. It's done automatically. Sure. So very bad for ranking. Um, and then uh, it's very too simple, basically. They, they use very minimal space uh, and it's not always good translation. Now, if you populate it, you might as well want to actually open a brand new listing with a different um, uh, UTC, uh, EN, EN number. Why? Because then you're going to be able to change the picture to each marketplace. If you do not open a new listing and do individual, um, you know, like reference uh, SKU or FNS SKU, uh, what's going to happen is your, your, your picture, they're not going to be able to feature some writing in German because then they're going to be in France and no one's going to understand why is that. And it's the same thing for Japan or, you know, you need to have like separate uh, FNS queues. So for example, are you recommending say, if for example, let's say we start with uh, Germany and then from Germany we, for the same product, let's say this pen, for example, we create a listing with a different uh, SKU and all that uh, automatically for all the different uh, European countries. And in that, if we do that, would we need to register our business in each of this separate countries and get the VAT or there's one central European, even if the country is not part of the European Union, but still in Europe, you know what I mean? So how would that how will yeah. work in that case, basically? Okay, so let, let's just make the most simple example. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you are uh, located in the UK, which, way, which is my case, basically, um, there's a different uh, VAT, different country, different percentage. Actually, it's pretty much the same in Europe, but um, uh, different rules, etc., of a product category. Uh, you, if you connect it to your bank institution in the UK, everything's going to be done for you by Amazon. So you don't have to touch anything. The downside of that is they actually charge you for the uh, currency conversion and they charge you a lot of money. Sure. So, you know, Amazon is a king at chasing your money from every every angle possible. That's why they're a trillion dollar company. <laughs> yeah. And they do like so-called mistakes where they're actually oh, yeah. plunged into your pockets. You know? yeah. yeah. So you got to make sure of that. Don't trust Amazon and, and bring your own solution. So a good example would be Payoneer, you know, Payoneer or, you know, like um, mm -hmm. transfer wise, any sort of company that can hold different uh currencies, multi-currency accounts. Uh, and then you can send that even to, um, you know, Belize. Belize is a great country to have a company because then you don't pay tax. I mean, I'm like all for Hong paying Kong? tax. Is it like in Hong Kong, if, you're, if your revenue is from outside of that place, you pay 0%? Correct. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Okay. Correct. I've got the contact if you guys want as, as well. To is it as easy company. as in Hong Kong? Or, I mean, as it was easy in Hong Kong or it's... Uh... It, it's still under the radar, the Belize. So um, it's it's straightforward. Easy would not exactly be the term, but you know, I, again, I love tax, but um, yeah. I don't like to pay too much. Can you can you do that online, or do you have to physically go to Belize to? Uh... Uh, you can do it online. Ah, oh, beautiful. Okay. Yes. Cool. Awesome. So yes, that you bas basically, it, it works more or less to to break it down. So you, your company. Or the company that you you know co uh, co own, um, you know, they they basically franchise your brand to your brand in the European system, and uh, every year there's like a royalty. So to make it very simple, it's not exactly like that, uh, and that fee is going to be paid that that company in Belize. So technically, your company doesn't make any profit in Europe. And therefore, don't have to pay tax. Awesome. Yes, please do share the contact with Billy's. I would be interested. I'm sure others. Would be I, I will. I will share it to only the people that's in the room right now. I can't share it to too many people. Ah, of course. Okay. Okay. I understand. Okay. Awesome. I'm loving these uh, Q and A's. Keep them coming, guys. Any more questions? When do oh, you were saying. Oh, sorry. Let him go. Let him go. No, you can go, Jess. Um, I was just going to say, so if you were going to try, the reason I was asking outside of Germany is because it looks like the search term for my product is like 
really popular in Finland. Oh. So would I just create a listing, a separate listing that's just in like targeted to them and then maybe a separate one for Germany? That's what you're saying to do? Absolutely. But the, the, the problem is that the marketplace uh, for Finland does not exist. So you'd have to be in, you'd have to do something in a smart, creative way so that the people in Finland and in Germany can share the information uh, on the same listing. So if you're, if you're, however, you know, like what people do, and that's for your PPC and your, all your advertising, you can target those words in Finnish. Mm-hmm. And because people, just like in the USA, a lot of Spanish people, they, they look for their keywords. And those uh, keywords, the, the click, because you pay per click, right, PPC, uh, the click is, is dirt cheap. So you can put a lot more, uh, a lot more um, effort on those keywords and you'll get the right traffic that is going to be susceptible to convert more for you. So mm-hmm. that would be a good strategy. But in the actual um, listing, I would really put my emphasis on the, the keyword that's going to rank me while staying... Uh, readable for everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Wait, are you able to geo-target your ads on Amazon PPC? You can, but uh, uh, not just with Amazon, though. <laughs> but you can. There's like creative ways, and uh, uh, there's a guy called uh, Yev Mazrenko that uh, geo-targets through his uh, uh, software in the USA, oh. not in Europe. It might come okay. in Europe, but not yet. Interesting. Cool. Definitely can do it. If you're if you're a tech savvy, if you've got like some partners doing software, definitely a good idea. Sure, especially once you have a, a big enough scale to to make it to justify it, yeah. Yeah. Good question, Jess. Thanks. Abe, what's your question? My question was around if you had sort of recommendations on tools when you're doing product research, maybe focused on Europe markets. Um, if there are better tools than others versus maybe the Jungle Scout or something like that that's more known. Yeah. At least for me in Mexico, I, I'm in the U. I'm from the U.S., but I live in Mexico right now. Right. Um, so I wonder if there's any European-centric tools that, that are helpful. I tell you what, the my favorite tool is the Amazon search bar. Old school. <laughs> I, you know, um, I'll give you an extension, though. Um I'm going to share the screen again, okay? Sure, go ahead. Let me go on Amazon. That works by, that's Amazon.com, but that works also. I'm going to show you on, on .co.uk. Um, do, 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 do. I don't know which one it is. I don't remember. <laughs> Oh, I think this is, uh, yeah, AMZ Suggestion oh, yeah. Expander. If you don't yeah. have that one, do install that one because what you're going to get is like, oh, okay, a uh, ceramic bowl. All right. So you got the Amazon search bar here. And then with the extension, you actually have got uh, more population on an order of uh, before or after keywords and other that are really close related and long term. Uh, long-term keywords, long-tail keywords. Uh, I also use um, tools for keywords and, and product research tools such as uh, Google Ads, you know, like the, the Ad Planner. Um, and the trends, you know, I, I try to go as organic as possible in my research. Uh, another great tool that I use is uh, answerthepublic.com. This is a free version yes. for the UK. Mm-hmm. Uh, answer the public. That's a great one, guys. Yes. I'm giving you some nuggets, guys. Right. I mean, if you know it, then it's probably not nuggets. But <laughs> if you don't know them, then I know it. It's a great resource for sure. Thank you for reminding yeah, us. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. 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 And so, uh, well, you see, I was looking for Chef Nice over here, and you get like a a rosas type of all the question that can be associated. So this does not work with everyone. The more it's populated, the more people are looking for it. And this is the order. And you can see here, it's very pale. So obviously less traffic towards this question. 
Um, so it, it's basically customer centered and you can transform in data here. Uh, good, works great for product research, work great uh, to customer avatar research, keyword research. You can use it for so many different use. Uh, there, was a, there used to be a tool also for product research called Yazif, but I'm not sure if it works. And that website is also awesome once you get a brand going to, uh, to look for, for ideas for content creation. Once you have a team, to say, hey, look, look for what people are looking for. Just tell your, your writer, hey, I want you to write uh, articles, whatever, based on these keywords. That's a perfect way to, to give your customers, your audience, exactly what they're looking for. So keep this, in, keep this uh, resource in mind. This is a, an amazing tool. <coughs> Which one? Yes, if yes, if is apparently uh, down since uh, March. Oh, wow. I haven't been. I haven't been. You know, I, I know my niche so well. I I really don't use those things anymore. But it used to connect uh, on a mind map products that are related together. Anyway, so you what, can have a what look. Did, what did this yes, if thing did? Um, it's like a mind map. Sorry, okay. where are you guys? I'm I'm such a noob with uh, Zoom. <laughs> Where are you guys? We can see you, don't worry. What are you trying okay. to do? We see your screen, yeah, okay. I'm trying to see see you again. <laughs> All right, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not that great with Zoom, guys. You have okay. to forgive me. Um, yeah, okay, uh, I see the, yeah, no problem. For you guys in the room, I'll, I'll share my Billy's contact, um, no problem. And can, um, we, can we share also that contact among our students inside the Facebook group, just for our students? Okay, they'll have to they'll have to send me an email. So I'll, I'll just make my email over here. Okay. Um, like I said, you know, this is this I want to keep in a tight club, if that makes of sense. Of course, of uh, course. Right. The poor guy is gonna just uh, be over overloaded with work, and I, uh, you know, if he wants, if I want the good work for him, I gotta keep him just busy enough, but not too busy. <clears throat> okay, uh, so that's my email. Contact me for uh, the resource. I will, uh, I will, you know, trade off your email so that I can target you uh, against my my tools and uh, my my tool list and other resources. No problem. Okay. You guys got any more question before I go? It's two a.m. for him right now. So thank you for staying this this late for us. Thank oh. you very much. That's all right. Okay. Well, don't right. hesitate if you've got other question. You get my email, and uh, I'll be glad to answer to you. Thanks, you. Thanks a lot, Lorenzo, for having me. My pleasure. And, Thank uh, you. And maybe I'll see you again in the in the community for more uh, for sure. webinars and uh, and, sure. uh, and workshops. If, if someone, if people want to connect with you, they can find you on Facebook as well, right? Yeah, yeah. basically Facebook. Uh, my Facebook group. You've got the slide. You can share the slides if you sure, want. Sure, we'll, uh, Yes, we will. Yep. No okay. problem. So you can scat me on, on the WeChat. Uh, if you want sourcing solutions, I uh, can be uh, of some help. Right now, I don't, I don't coach. Uh, you know, I really want to focus now on my products. Uh, but, you know, like for, for motivated people that if we see we're a good match, why not? Depending. But I think, you know, uh, Lorenzo and uh, his partner have got amazing community. I've seen what they do and I validate uh, all the way. So I, I don't think you guys need any more coach than this. No, thank you for that. And basically what we're trying to do by bringing this uh, expert like yours, we want to, to build also a network of trusted, reliable uh, and world-class expert in key areas of e-commerce and Amazon FBA. So we can build like, a, like an ongoing, like almost like... Uh, like a Rolodex of top, top expert, top contacts for all our community to get access to. And that's why when it, when it comes to European market, of course, you were one of the first person that came to mind, Baptiste, because I that's have seen right. you. I know that you're doing, you're crushing it. And yeah, so thank my, you very my much. My next thing, and this is me talking to you as a friend, uh, you know, we are friends, but my next thing is going to be so huge. It's going to be like systems, SOPs how to make your business go fast, having a plan, you know, a whole plan set up in front of you, the three years, step by step, the whole way, you know, and uh, yeah, hopefully I'll be able to showcase that with my own story. Yeah, and, when you're uh, ready for that, we'll bring yeah. you back on an expert so you can present that to us. It'll be a pleasure. Yeah, I'm so excited with this already. For sure, I can awesome. see it. I can see it. <laughs> cool, but, all right. I'm off, thank guys. You thank you very much. much. Sorry for the, the no connection problem. problem. And uh, we'll see you soon. <laughs>
Thank you for staying Thank you. this late for us. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the FBA Lifestyle Podcast. Don't forget to follow on all podcast platforms, YouTube, and Instagram. Ready to fast track your first or next FBA product? Ready to create a real product that leaves the competition in the dust? Then check out the 90-Day FBA Challenge, a 12-week accelerator program with weekly coaching calls where we help you go from zero idea what to sell to a product live on Amazon within 90 days. And download the free Amazon Secrets ebook, FBA Lifestyle, The Amazon Experts. Start your FBA business. Achieve the freedom lifestyle.